the greedy hamster. There was once a hamster named Harry. He was a very greedy hamster. As soon as his food was put in his cage, he gobbled it all up and then he would push his little nose through the bars in the hope that something else to eat might come within reach. From his cage, he could see all manner of delicious food on the kitchen table and the smells. The scent of freshly baked bread was enough to send him spinning round in his exercise wheel with frustration. It's not fair, he grumbled to himself. They're all eating themselves silly out there and here I am simply starving to death. At this point, he would usually remember the large meal he had just eaten and that his tummy was indeed still rather full. If only I could get out of this rotten cage, I could feast on all the food I deserve, he announced to himself, and the thought of all those chasey morsels made his mouth water. One night after the family had gone to bed, Harry was having one last spin in his wheel before retiring to his sawdust mattress. As he spun around, he heard an unfamiliar squeaking noise. That's funny, thought Harry. The little girl oiled my wheel only today. It surely can need oiling again. He stopped running and got off the wheel. But the squeak continued. Harry sat quite still on his launches and listened intently. Then he realized it was the door to his cage squeaking. The door. The door was flapping open. The little girl had not closed it properly before she went to bed. Harry did a little dance of glee. Then he went to the door and looked cautiously out in case there was any danger. But all seemed to be well. The cat was asleep on the chair. The dog was sleeping soundly on the floor. Now, as well as being a greedy hamster, Harry was also clever. Once outside the cage, the first thing he did was to look at the catch to see how it worked. Yes, he was pretty sure he could work out how to open it from the inside now. Harry sniffed the air. There were some tasty tidbits left over from a birthday party on the table. He could smell the sugar icing. And soon, he was on the table cramming his mouth with odds and ends of cheese sandwiches and pieces of chocolate cake. When he had eaten his fill, he stuffed his cheek pouches with ginger cookies and ran back into his cage, closing the door behind him. Good, thought Harry. Now, I will never be hungry again. The next night, Harry let himself out of his cage and helped himself to food him again. The next night and the night after that, he feasted on everything and anything, nuts, bananas, pieces of bread, leftover jello and slices of pizza were all pushed into his greedy mouth. Each time he returned to his cage, he filled his cheeks with more and more food. He did not notice that he was getting fatter and fatter. Although he was aware that he could no longer run round in his wheel without falling off. Then one night, he undid the door catch, but found he was simply too wide to get through the door. For a while, Harry sat in a very bad temper in the corner of the cage. His cheeks were still bulging with food from his last midnight feast, but the greedy hamster wanted more. And he had an idea. I'll get that lazy cat to help, he thought. He squealed at the top of his voice until the cat, who had been dreaming of rats, woke up with a start. What do you want? She hissed at Harry. Harry explained his problem. Of course, I'd be only too pleased to help, said the crafty cat, thinking to herself here was an extra dinner. With her strong claws, she bent back the door frame of the cage until there was just enough room for Harry to squeeze through. Then with a mighty swipe of her paw, she caught him and gobbled him whole. She felt extremely full with what Harry and all his food inside her. She could barely crawl back to her chair and soon, she was fast asleep again and snoring loudly with her mouth open. Inside her tummy, Harry felt very uncomfortable too. Every time the cat snored, it sounded like a thunderstorm raging around his head. I must get out of here, he thought, and headed for the cat's open jaws. But he was far too fat to get out again. Then he had another idea. Through the cat's jaws, he could see the dog lying on the floor. Help! Help! He squeaked. The dog woke up to a very strange sight. There was the cat lying on the chair snoring. But she also seemed to be squeaking, help! The dog put his head on one side. He was very perplexed. Then he saw a pair of beady eyes and some fine whiskers inside the cat's mouth. It was Harry. Get me out of here, please, pleaded Harry. Now, the dog did not very much like the cat. So he was quite willing to help the hamster. 
I'll stick my tail in the cat's mouth. Then you hang on while I pull you out, said the dog. But mind you, don't make a sound and wake the cat or she'll surely bite my tail. The dog gingerly put the tip of his tail inside the cat's open jaws, just far enough for Harry's little paws to grab hold. Then he pulled with all his might. Out popped Harry and out of Harry popped all the food he stored in his cheeks, peanuts, and apple core and a slice of jam tart. Thank you, thank you, gasped Harry as he made a dash for his cage and slammed the door shut. I think I'll stay in my cage from now on and just stick to the food I'm given, 